Robert Kirby presents at Conscious Living in Sydney. Who would like to know how to be more successful in business? <laughs> and who hasn't seen Robert Kirby present before? So there's a few newbies. Beautiful. Well, Robert tells me he's been on a spiritual journey for 40 years and he's been doing personal, facilitating personal growth and self-help workshops for 26 years. And he used to be a rocket scientist. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, he used to work in the aerospace industry. So, uh, so he's going to enlighten us and how to be, have a heart-centred business. So please welcome Robert Kirby. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Karen. Shaki, that was absolutely fantastic. I feel amazing now, yes. I don't even have to say anything. I'm just gonna put my energy out to you. I feel so enlightened, expanded. My toes are still tingling, and so are my hands and my scalp. So that was absolutely beautiful. Um, so we'll just shift the topic a little bit. Uh, but not a lot of it, if you know what I mean, because we're going to be looking at uh, business from a spiritual perspective and an energetic perspective, but also a practical perspective. So what I'd like you to do, just to, just to get an idea, is how many people would like to go to the next level in business? Okay. So, I, so it's virtually everybody in the room. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, in working with business owners, I love to, I have a corporate background, but I love working with uh, business owners. And I've been self-employed 26 years, and I absolutely love it. Um, it's enabled me to travel the whole world and, and, and do what I love. So somehow I wound up in Sydney, so here I am. Um, but the truth is, no matter where you are in business, you want to go to the next level. And then when you get to the next level, you get comfortable with that, and you want to go to the next level. It's just human nature, isn't it? We want to strive for more and more excellence. And um, you know, in doing that, sometimes we get bumped off our path. Life has a way of challenging us. And one of the things that I noticed is that some people in business have certain blind spots. And when people have blind spots, but they're not aware of it, because that's why they call them blind spots, is that they have, part of them believes and part of them doubts. And so it splits them, really, and so they go into duality. And if I relate this to some of the topics uh, that Shakti was talking about, the, these resistances or negativities or fears that come up, they get stuck in our aura and in our energy system. And sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dig our heels in, we'll build up our momentum and our courage and we'll go back out and we'll, we'll start achieving more success and we'll start building some momentum and we'll get excited. But then, you know, businesses have different ebbs and flows. So if there's a certain uh, time of the season or um, time of the year where your business is not successful, people will contract back into fear. Do you know what I mean? How many can relate to that? Um, so it, it makes it really challenging. So the first thing I want you to do is just without... Um, you know, beating yourself up at all. Just take a look at the charts and see where you're at. So please, when you read it, this is the business chart. Now this would be something that's really objective, and this one is the quality of life, and this is subjective. So the main thing that I want to teach you this afternoon is that to move up this chart, which is quite objective, the access point, the doorway, is through the subjective. In other words, the business owner's relationship with his or herself will determine the solidity of one's ability to climb this path. Is that making sense to you? So this is the objective, and just, of course, if you're a startup business, a lot of people are, are in a startup business, you might not relate to all of these, but if you've been in business for a few years, uh, like Trish and I have been in business forever, uh, you know, on, on this uh, spiritual path, so, you know, and anybody who's been in business for a while can relate to this. So just see where you're at. And no matter where you're at, it doesn't matter because what you're going to do after this weekend is go to the next level. Does that make sense? So get an idea of where you're at. So this would be the objective. And, um, you know, if you're down here, you're at break even, um, it, it's difficult to tell someone that you're expanding because it's just a whole different stage in the business, okay? So now, this one would be the subjective, this would be the quality of life. I like to call it your relationship with yourself, and this is your relationship with your business. But a lot of times people say that they are their business, 
and it creates a lot of confusion in them because the business has an energy of its own. You might have a personal crisis in your personal life, and if you are your business, then your business will flatline instantly. If you have the ability or the capacity to differentiate that, yes, there's something in my personal life that's not in truth, and I've slid down here, I'm going to deal with it, but it doesn't mean my business has to contract. Does that make sense? So sometimes people on a spiritual path will say, oh, it's all one to me, the whole universe. It really isn't, and differentiation is really important. Uh, that's been my experience. So now I'll get you, whatever you do, please don't read it from the top down, because you'll, you'll end up depressed. And I want, you to be, I want you to have fun today here while you're with me. So you always have, it's really powerful, this tool, but you have to read it from the bottom up. So read it all the way up. And, and get an idea where you're at in your life. So this has nothing to do with business or finance. This is just you. Your relationship with the universe uh, or the eternal now. Okay, so got an idea about that. So uh, I meet so many business owners that feel that to get to the next level in business, there's a list of objective things that they must do. I must have better blogs. I need a copywriter. I need a better website. I need to be better at sales. I need to be better at marketing. And if I learn all these skills, my business will take off. And I want to tell you something. It ain't true. It ain't true, my friends. It's simply not the truth. Uh, I'll tell you a couple uh, quick stories. I have a friend uh, who uh, has a business in Sydney. It's only uh, like four, four and a half years old. And he is on BRW's list of 100 top uh, fastest growing companies in Australia. And uh, he's, he, he, what I noticed was that his website was quite average. And I would think if someone's going to get that kind of award, they'd have the schmickest website. So when I ran into him, I said, hey, you know, I hope you don't mind me asking this. Now, congratulations on your award. I read that in the paper. And, uh, but I noticed the website is you know, sort of OK. And he says, Robert, I'm so busy making money. I don't have time to sort the website out. We will get to that, but it is not the priority. I said, would you elaborate on that? Because I know a lot of my clients could really benefit. He said, it's not about the website. He says, even my logo is kind of corny. He says, someday I'll get a better branding. It's not about that. He says, I am so aligned with my product. I am so aligned. Every bit of me, all my chakras, body, mind, spirit, heart, and soul is aligned and it's just flowing to me. It's effortless. And that's where we want to go to. I, you know, I want to get people at effortless flow. This is like what I pride myself in, to clear the blocks on, a, on the body and the mind and the psycho-spiritual level to get up here. And then all of a sudden, you could call it magic if you want, because it's quite magical. It's like really connecting to spirit and the heart. You start to move up here. No matter where you are on this chart, you'll just start to move up. And you won't ha it won't be like going through life carrying a refrigerator on your back, dragging your business with you, which is what so many people do, and they get burnt out and they get exhausted. And business is supposed to be fun because we're here to serve. And you know, we want to give something wonderful in exchange. Yes, we want to get something back because it costs a lot of money to live in Sydney. And that's the reality of it, isn't it? It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. So it doesn't matter why, it's just the way it is. So this is what we have to do, get a line. Now, so I'll give you just one more little example. Um, last year, 2014, in the UK, 700,000 new businesses were started. And by Christmas, 670,000 had gone bankrupt, down here. That means Coming into January 2015, only 30,000 of those businesses had survived the first year of business. This is not unusual. I do not believe for two minutes that those people, 630, uh, 670,000 people in the UK, is a very sophisticated place in the world, very educated place in the world. I, w I don't believe that those people did not have a good product or service. In fact, I believe they did. And the reason that their business went under is because of issues around here. They maybe were not emotionally and spiritually prepared to hold that business. Because we're holding the business, aren't we? When we start a business, we're holding it. We are the container 
that holds that business. And as Shaki was saying, is that all the chakras need to be aligned. You need to be grounded. You need to be present. Your heart needs to be open because your energy is that business. Your energy feeds that business. And when the business is successful, the business feeds you back. How many is this making sense to? Yeah, just so I get, oh, good. Okay, so good. Uh, so we're on the same page. And so one of the things that I notice is that um, when I... Uh, left the, the corporate world. And, you know, Karen was just kidding. I am not a rocket scientist. I work with rocket scientists, but I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> That's not my thing. I was more in, on the business than in negotiations. But, well, you know, when I left, I got into uh, a business facilitating and doing healing. And I was, I was working on this concurrently for many years, uh, gaining my skills in Southern California. So there's there's about a zillion workshops every weekend, so you'd never know where to pick. But, it, you know, I was a kinesiologist, so I picked by muscle testing which workshop I needed to do next. And so I, I gained all these skills. So when I quit the corporate world, I hit the ground running. I was so excited. I was so aligned. I had no business card. I had no website. Uh, I didn't even know what the Internet was. Uh, you know, and the, but the Internet was around, but I had no idea. Um, I, I had some brochures and a really chicken shit logo. It wasn't very good. It was, by today's standards, it was very, very mediocre. But as soon as I started my business, it exploded. And it wasn't like I was planning on it exploding. I had no idea that I, I thought maybe, well, you know, maybe I'm not cut out for business and I'll have to eat humble pie and crow for breakfast and go back into the corporate world, which I, you know, I had opportunities to do. But the reason... To be honest, it's just like what this beautiful lady was saying. I was, I was totally aligned with what I wanted to do, and it just came to me. It was effortless. Like, it wasn't even like trying. Isn't that where our businesses should be? And, and so what I'm, what I'm advocating to you is that if no matter where you are on this, you've got to get yourself up to effortless flow, and then it spills over into business. And yes, of course, you need to have a good website, you need to improve your, your blogs if you write <laughs> blogs and articles and so forth. And you want to have a nice brand because that means a lot to people if it looks really schmick and you have nice brochures. I'm not saying that you don't need that. Yes, you do need it, um, but that's like the frosting on the cake. So, you know, I have a, um, a friend, Donna, who's a colleague uh, in America, and she is one of the most prosperous women I've ever met. Things just flow to her. And... Um, she does alternative work. And so she said, Robert, let me put it for you really crudely. If you don't work on your emotional, spiritual blocks and your negativity, and you try to have a business, it's like putting delicious frosting on a shit cake. You don't, no one wants a, even one bite of it. No one wants it because what's underneath is the energy field really, really contracted. It's you trying to put on a face that's not really you. So, it's, so the universe doesn't cut you a break. If you're not in truth, things will contract. If you are in truth and you're aligned and you're in a state of expansion, you virtually will go into effortless flow and eventually, you know, you'll be an overnight success in 10 years. You work your butt off and you'll, you'll get over here and you'll be in the zone in your business. Who, how many wants that? Yeah, we all want that. We all want that, and we all deserve that. I'll tell you a little story that to me, to this day, it was many years ago, but to me, it's still hilariously funny. Um, <clears throat> I was referred a client who just graduated. He's a young man. He graduated from USC. That's the University of Southern California. It's a very expensive school. You have to be super bright to get in. And he majored in commercial real estate. And his parents funded him, and there was, he graduated. There was tremendous pressure on him to make a lot of money because there was a lot of money in the family. And the, this young guy failed. He could not sell anything. And he came to me and he asked me for help. And, and he says, you know, I'm, I'm at the top of my class. I got a master's degree, and I've been, at it, I've been out in the, in the property, commercial property market two years. I haven't closed one deal, and I haven't got one commission and my father's got his foot so far up my butt, I can't even breathe. So the, the pressure for him to, and the guy was like, he was like shaking. And I said, you're not in your body. 
You're not grounded. Your heart is closed. I can see that you're very bright. All the energy is in your head. There's no energy in your legs. And there's no, there's no person there. What people want is to see your humanity. And so he didn't buy a word of it, like the spiritual stuff. He just was very young. He wasn't, it was all about how much he knew, how smart he was, and how wealthy his family was. But he didn't get it, and he wasn't ready. So the universe had to bump him around a little bit more. And I actually don't know what became of him. But this is the analogy. Another guy was referred to me, and he was also a young guy, but he was selling beachfront property in Southern California. He flunked out of high school. He was overweight. He was kind of a goofy guy, and his energy field was huge. He was grounded. His legs were like tree trunks. His heart filled the room. He was hilariously witty. He had interpersonal skills like I'd never seen. He could talk to anyone. So if someone wanted, came into Southern California, they were referred to him. In his third year, he made $400,000, and this is like 20 years ago. The kid was amazing. Everything he touched turned to gold. He was not smart. He had no degrees, but he was totally aligned. I'd never seen an energy like that. And every, he said, I said, how do you do it? He says, I sit down with the couple. I spend the whole day with them, and I, I write down everything they tell me. I start telling jokes about Southern California, and I go and I find the property that they love, and I keep calling them every day to update them. So what he gave... He over-delivered, and he over-promised. He said, I am not going to stop until I find the property that you want. So his level of exchange and excellence was so high because his whole heart was in it. And I said, when he came to me, I said, uh, you know, why are you here anyway? My God, you make more money than God, and you're just a young guy. He said, well, I'm a bit overweight, and my girlfriend thinks I drink too much. What should I do? I said, there's only one thing we can do. We get us a new girlfriend. You, 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 know, you, you, you can't stop drinking. It's part of life in Southern California. You need those beers to let steam off. He goes, are you serious? I said, no, no, just, just, just negotiate with her. I said, buy her something really nice. Take her on a holiday. Take her to Hawaii, something. Yeah, sh she'll, she'll lighten up. I said, but, you know, maybe, maybe you could start jogging in the morning. You know, maybe, maybe you want to have more pride in your appearance. There's some, so money's not a problem, so maybe you want to take better care of your body, so 20 years from now, you'll feel better about yourself. So just think about that. How many get the idea that it's not about, it's not about sophistication? It's not about being the smartest, reading the most books? I know so many, so many people talk about, I, you know, like, so I've been in this new age world, I guess, because I, I lived in Southern California for a long time before, I'm, before Patricia brought me out to Australia. And, um, I saw all these people who, they read every metaphysical book up to the ceiling, yeah, but they weren't in their body. So I, I, I call them the California hippies. You know, they smoke a lot of dope, and they, then they try to meditate. But it's just not real. It's not congruent. They're, so they're forever trying to fix their chakras, but they're not really present, and most of them don't work. And so they just want to be spiritual hippies, but why can't you have both? Why can't you be like this beautiful lady, totally aligned, totally grounded, totally expanded, and make some money too? It doesn't have to be your God. You know, what's in your heart and soul uh, can be that. Can be that, you know, the, the, that highest chakra that you want to connect with, and you work on it every day, every day, and you read what you want. But uh, obsessive, compulsive readers about trying to get the most knowledge, they're here. They're in their head. So what we do in our work we work with the body, and we work with the body's energy system to bring people down. I'll just show you this a little bit um, about the quality of life. So what I've noticed with people who are five and down is, um, remember, this is in reference to business because this talk is about business. When there are five and, or, or lower, could someone hold this up so they can see in back, Mike? Because some people are struggling to see it. Oh, thanks for that. Are you okay? Okay. All right. So when you're five or down, you're anxious. It's very difficult to lead with your heart in business if, you're, if you wake up in the morning full of anxiety and you don't sleep as deep. And if you're three and down, you're depressed. And so there's a lot of people in, this, in, our, in our Western culture who live in this area and they're medicated. 
And so instead of working on the opening up their chakras and their heart and getting grounded and working through their negativity and confronting what isn't in truth, they just go to the dock and get a script. Now the script may sort of camouflage the anxiety or the depression, but guess where your life force stays? Right here. The medication does not advance because it is a mask. I think everyone here knows that. It's not real. And, and, and the, the research in the World Bank says by the year 2030, half the men and women and children in the Western culture will be medicated for one thing or another. So people like us, we have to group together to show an example, to lead with the heart, to lead grounded with our chakras open and everything expanded. We have to lead in truth because, you know, the pharmaceutical companies have billions of dollars and, you know, even like, you know, every year I try to go back, bring my son, I have a 14-year-old son, I bring him back to America, and I look at the TV, because I don't watch TV here in Australia. On the TV is every other ad is about uh, flaunting uh, pharmaceutical drugs. And so what I think is that business owners get so stressed out, and it's many times they get depressed, because, you know, the economy is a little shaky or this or that. They get knocked on their backside, and so they'll go to the doctor and they'll end up on, on some kind of medication. I'm going to tell you something, they'll never get to the next level while they're on that medication. I haven't seen anybody do it. Maybe you can do it. I just haven't seen anyone do it. So we have to be, you know, if we're going to be pure beings or, and we're going to lead in truth, then we have to lead in truth. So this is why um, what, I, what I, we've been successfully able to do is, is to create some programs to get people up here, not authentically. It's not like... Um, sort of uh, the kind of hype energy that is at a football game. Do you know what I mean? Ha, ha, ha. It's not that. We don't do that. We actually systematically look at the body-mind connection, and we look at the psycho-spiritual dynamic that's going on in the person. You can see that in their eyes and the way the energy moves. Certain parts of the body are overcharged. Other parts of the body are undercharged. And so what we want to do is to get that energy, to free that energy up, so you have plenty of chi, and you have a, a much more expanded inhale and exhale, and as you exhale, that energy goes down into your feet and tingles. Like after the meditation, my toes were tingling. It wasn't always like that. My toes used to be ice cold all the time. But from years of meditating and grounding and on opening up the blocks, is that after amazing meditation like that, everything just... Whoosh, Energy just goes through my whole body. And so I'm not special or anything. I'm not enlightened or anything like that. I just, I'm just really committed. And so I do it every day, every day, every day. I'm doing my grounding and my meditation and wanting to open up more and more and more. Does this make sense to anyone? And so, so yeah, this is what I want for people. This is, I get so excited. Um, okay, you can put that down, Mike. I don't want you to, I don't want his arms to fall off. Thank you. Give him a little hand. Yeah, thanks for that. So, um, yes, so, so what I'm wanting to do is to get you to focus on this, your relation, the business owner's relationship with him or herself to get you here. In the meantime, you know, if you, you, if you, if you have the cash flow to get a better website or hire someone to do your, uh, you know, your copywriting or something like that, all that helps, but this is way more important. And so that, that's like secondary stuff. This is like I talk, told to that guy in Sydney. The website, if you saw it, you'd go, you'd have a bit of a yawn if you saw it. But the guy's, his business is going like that because he's so aligned. So I want people to get really aligned. I want to get the psycho-spiritual, emotional material out of the way so you're authentically, organically up here or close to here and not down there. And then the, the last thing I want to talk to you about this afternoon is that what can you do to like the chubby property salesman in Southern California, the open-hearted guy, what can you do in your business to over-promise and over-deliver? Because I know there's a slogan around, you, you under-promise and over-deliver, but why can't you do both? Why can't you say, I'm going to move heaven and earth with my product or service to get you here, and then deliver that and deliver more, and come from a really generous place? And from that very generous place, the people will change because you're holding the space of love and truth for that person. Is this making sense? Yeah. It's a really beautiful thing to watch. Um, 
I had a young man, and he, he has a business in IT. Um, he's 30-something years old, and he's got a wife and um, two young children, and they're on this amazing uh, spiritual journey. They're meditators, and uh, they meditate with a certain ashram uh, here in, in Sydney in the western suburbs. They'd like to go uh, to their guru in New York, um, upstate New York, and to meditate there. Um, <clears throat> however, in spite of all this meditation, this young guy was so anxious. Even though he was meditating, he was so anxious, and he was triggering his wife, and his wife was triggering him. And he said, oh, he says, my business is so amazing. You know, I've hired um, four people, and he says, I just can't get to the next level because I'm so fearful. The contracts, the tenders that I put out, no one, none of the, uh, no one's getting back to me. He says, even though my product is amazing and I have a good business, I want to get to the biz, I want to get the, the business to seven figures in one year's time. And so he started working with me uh, last year, in the middle of last year, and I work with both he and his wife because his wife does the accounting, does the bookkeeping. And so they were down here, and they worked really hard. They came to a few of my workshops, and they did some private sessions. But in, I said, in addition to your meditation, you've got to do grounding every day. And you've got to make sure that that breath is going through you. And so when you exhale, that energy goes into the earth, so your heart feels safe. And they did it. They decided to trust me, and they went for it. They got the business to seven figures uh, by Christmas of last year. Uh, floor, four employees to 12 employees. And he says, Robert, the only difference is now I'm relaxed. And the business is moving. You know, he's up here now. He's optimizing opportunities. He's moved toward expansion. In a year's time, he'll be in the zone. And he still has his spiritual practice, but he's more in the earth. Is this, is this do like over on psychotherapy? You know, I'm considered one of the best in the world. I read, I saw this, the scan that, that I'm, I'm anxious to have a scan from Shaki because it's a different approach, but, you know, similar in different ways. I'm more, I'm more in the body character. And over energy, energy, she has this amazing um, sort of perception of the chakras. I loved what she did. So I'd, I'd love to learn more about her work too. Um, but in the body psychotherapy world, I'm, I'm extremely skilled in reading where the energy is blocked and where the breath is, is, is blocked. So, and then I can muscle test where you are on one chart or the other or both. If one of them's too scary, we won't do that one today. <laughs> you might be too scared to find out. But if you want to know both, I'll muscle test you on that, and also um, you can sign up for the free uh, workshop. And uh, and by the, you know we have a heartfelt relationships workshop too. Um, while I've got you here, and um, it, it, and um, <clears throat> that's free also. It's a two-day workshop, and it's about working on your relationship with yourself. So uh, and usually that's two thousand dollars, but that one is absolutely free as well. And I've been do, uh, facilitating that around the world. Uh, for the last 15 years. I absolutely love it. I love, I'm like, excited about relationships and helping people have a great relationship with themselves and their partner or to attract someone. Now, a lot of the blocks, and the blocks are in, in the body. It, it's in the body energy and in the cellular memory, and it enormously affects the, the chakras and the auric field. So does anybody here want to get tested on either one of these? Come. Okay. All right, and your name? My name is Tina. Tina, yeah. come right here. Uh, all right, so uh, you want you want this one, the quality um, of life? No, I'm going to do the business because I have to start it. Okay, well then you're going to be low. Yeah. So, okay. but what would be in the way of getting that? Just point it out right now. You know, you know intellectually, where are you at? Uh, you're not bankrupt because you're just starting. Yeah, I'm starting out. I've put money into it. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, barely profitable. Okay, so let's test that. All right, so show me what a yes is. Yes, yes, show me a no, no, no. So you're, 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 you're trying to do the business from your head. That's the first thing I want to tell you. And we have to get you down into your heart because things will be more effortless that way. When we're in our heart, the universe comes to your doorstep. When we're in our head, we put out a forcing current and it's like running the business with a refrigerator on your back. <laughs> is not pleasant. There she goes. She calmed down a little. Okay, show me a yes. Show me a no. 
Okay, my name is Tina. My name is George. Well, she's definitely Tina. We know that. Okay. Is she at uh, barely profitable? Is she at good debt? Oh, you're not there yet? Um, is she at break even? Barely profitable. That, that's where your energy is showing that you're at. That's good for a startup. That's what I chose, isn't it? Yeah, that's what you chose. And your body agrees with that. See, the one thing I want to tell you about when I do the muscle test, women don't have the ego structure that men have. So when they look at it, it's almost 99% of the time, it's right. When I do the test, the woman knows. With men, on the other hand, they always add two. Because <laughs> our egos are so huge. And so we're pretending, we males, to be higher than we actually are. And that takes the women to cut us down to size. And they're really good at it. You know, they, they, bring it they keep us humble. That's their job. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. All right. So where are you here, my dear? Uh, Tina? I was choosing myself between these two. Uh, between seven and eight? Yeah. Okay. We'll see. All right. Let's find out. See, but she's in her male energy, so maybe we'll see. Okay, is it more than one, two, three, four, five? And it's going. Um, more than 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, and it's dead on five. Yes, no. Is Tina a five? Something other. And so you're right here at good effort. And so, look. Is that business-wise? Yeah. No, 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 this is the quality of life. Oh. This is Tina's relationship with Tina okay. and the freedom of chi as it moves through your physical body. Okay. And so this is about half as good as it ought to be. Yeah. I want you here. Yes. Yeah? Are you willing to be there? Uh, yes. Okay, but you have some blocks. Looks like it. Okay, so <laughs> c do you want me to talk about them? Certainly can. Yeah. But I don't want you to be embarrassed. Okay. Yeah. Should I go for it? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, so if you look here, uh, she has the will center that's very powerful, but there's been a lot of betrayal. And so I would say for her in business, the best thing about Tina, of the five character structures, she has the two with the most heart energy. So she has the capacity to fill the room with love, but she doesn't. It's just because of things that have happened. There's been a lot on her plate. When she was young, things were a little bit shaky. She locks her knees out from the earth. She's terrified of the earth energy running into her heart because she doesn't want to deal with the pain. And that's what we all do. If she was willing to clear, 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 she could bend her knees and be more like this, right? When you're in line at the bank, I want you like this from now on, all right? <laughs> Tina the warrior, just like this. No, I'm just kidding, just a little bit. Just a little bit here, more into the, you know, martial arts, a little bit more down, and coming into that earth energy, because I want that energy to come into your heart. But you've got a block here. And this block is, I, I, I could honestly say, if I look at your energy, it's not about overeating. The block is about anxiety. You're overcharged. And so the creative energy, which you have significant, you got a little, she's, this girl's got a lot of juice. She's very creative. But that energy doesn't come across as passion because of the anxiety, the block here, the overcharge here, and it shows up as anxiety because she is a control freak. This is Tina. See this? This is all about control. And so, so what I would be doing... If, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She said she wouldn't take it personal. Yeah, no. But you, you do control the environment, and that's why... That's why you, you're running your business from your head, and we need to get you more down here. Okay. So that's what I would want to do is free this energy up, remove that block, get her more in touch. So the base chakra is really strong, especially because she breathes very shallowly. Her exhale is really shallow, I can tell. So she's a little bit bound, yeah. But once, once she gets free, and instead of the reason, these, these things that I just pointed out are the reason that she's at a five. When this woman becomes free, that business will go flying up. But with energy at a five, it's not gonna happen. Do you guys get what I mean? Up here, if she gets up, once she starts getting up to eight, nine, ten, and, and this energy that's really locked, and this overcharge starts to flow through her body, she'll expand and she'll, you know, her aura will come around the corner five minutes before Tina. So that's what she has. She has a lot of energy. It's more, when I work with people with under energy, I, my job is harder. 
but when someone has this much energy, she's easy to work with, just has to get unplugged. Is that making sense? Can you give her a hand? Thank you. Appreciate that. Very kind. Another round of applause. Thank you.